Hey guys, Exo here. Today I'm going to show you my guide for energy overflow surface. It's going to include skill rotation, runes, engraving, stat distributions, and just some tips and tricks. I hope you guys enjoy. So let's talk about energy overflow and why it's a viable choice to make for your soul fist. Um, firstly, um, to understand how energy overflow works, I'd recommend you watch my soul fist class engraving guide video um, to get a base understanding of what the engraving does. But um, for the purpose of this video, energy overflow essentially gives you a unlimited resource pool which is very useful on a energy on a soul fist because our main stat is swiftness and unlike other swiftness classes that have concerns of um, resource pools like mana and things like that soul fists do not because our combat resource or energy cannot run out with energy overflow what does this mean this means that you can just piano your keys at a certain point if you get enough swiftness so there's no constraint on when you can use a skill if it's up you can just use it the only thing you need to be concerned about is using them in the window provided by your energy release and we'll get to that later in the video so all your accessories will be swiftness and you get some crit on your necklace now now let's go to the engravings. So Soul Fist has zero crit chance tripods. So all our crit chance comes from our accessories, um, our engravings and our and um, party synergies from other classes. We don't we don't bring any crit by default. So I run precise dagger to get a 20% crit chance increase at the cost of 12% crit damage. It still works out as a DPS increase, pretty good for me, so that's why I use it. I have my max class engraving. I have increased mass, which gives me 18% attack power at the cost of 10% attack speed. And again, playing a swiftness class, I, I'm still positive on attack speed, so just off of my accessories so I easily negate the downside of increased mass and when hype is activated I get even more attack speed so I can completely ignore the negative 10 attack speed then we have adrenaline adrenaline is basically mandatory for energy overflow um, it's a pretty useful engraving um, it gives us 6% attack power increase and 15% crit chance so long as you can maintain it and it's really easy to maintain with energy overflow and, and I'll be going through that and how I maintain it when we go through the skill selection later in the video. So let's start with the skills. First skill I'll be talking about is flash step or movement ability. Um, with this I take instant preparation victory shout and dynamic dimension dynamic dimension i have just now right now because i have a lot of extra skill points before i hit level 60 and nowhere else to put them so i put it here just to just get some use out of my additional skill points dynamic dimension just turns flash step into a decent damage ability once i get level 60 i'll be dropping this down to level 7 and only taking the blue and green tripods Instant preparation helps with the cooldown reduction of flash step. Every time you dash, it reduces the cooldown by one second. So after dashing three times, the end the end result of a cooldown reduction, it just takes three seconds off of that. It's um pretty useful to keep uh, adrenaline up. Um, victory shout after every dash, you get an attack power boost. Um, currently, I get 13.6% attack power after every dash, stacking three times, so I get around 41% or close to 41% attack power increase after I dash three times. Now, Flash Step is a very useful skill in our kit, not just for the mobility and the attack power increase, but also because each cast of flash step counts as an individual skill cast 
they can each stack adrenaline. So you can get three out of the six stacks needed for adrenaline just from flash step. Which makes it really easy to build and maintain since the skill's cooldown is so low. This combined with your other abilities gives you the opportunity to basically keep adrenaline up 100% of the time so long as you use skills in a, in a somewhat decent rotation. Now we'll go over rotations later in the video so you don't need to worry about that right now. On this I take quick recharge because why not? I mean more cooldown reduction or a chance at cooldown reduction. Quick recharge reduces the cooldown of all your abilities um, by well by 12% for the epic quick for the epic quick recharge. This means that with flash step I have three opportunities to trigger this because flash step can be used three times. So it's a pretty useful um, pretty useful rune to have on this skill just to keep my skills up. You're free to put any other skill you want here, especially when the relic sets come into play and you get more cooldown reduction. You could easily replace this with something like bleed so you could dash into the boss and trigger your bleed and continue your rotation. Now let us go on to our next skill. I have force orb. Now force orb for force orb I take quick prep for the cooldown reduction, off a wave for a damage increase, and scattering wave to turn it from one projectile into three. Scattering wave is a pretty decent uh, or a really good ability or tripod actually because each projectile is actually its own source of damage so if you're far away you can see that he got hit by a one and just take off the cooldown if you're far away you can see that he got hit by a one but if you're up close you can see that he got hit by three so it's a range ability that deals more damage at close range where you can basically shotgun the boss similarly to um, flash step because this is three sources of damage um, I run it with conviction because each orb has their own chance to proc conviction which means it's highly likely that you get to proc conviction since you have this many tar projectiles coming out at once. Um, it's a pretty useful skill only to be used at close range so you can hit the target with all three. Now right beside this I have Heavenly Squash. On Heavenly Squash I take Hard Hitter with increased damage, Harsh Training and Exquisite Attack. The reason you take harsh training is because without it, the skill takes too long to actually come out, and so the boss be, the boss might move before the skill gets a chance to land. So if I take off harsh training, see that there is this delay between the anime, animation and the actual arms coming from the sky. But if I reactivate Harsh Training, you can see that it's near instant. The skill comes out faster, so you have a more, better opportunity to hit the boss with it before the boss moves. Now, this is one of our highest damage abilities, but it's a bit unreliable, and I will show you why. Now, if I summon this, you'll see that if I target this scarecrow here and use the ability, you can see he only got hit by one. So he got hit by two in that for that cast. But you notice that the palms fall randomly around the target. So you're not guaranteed to land all four palms. Meaning it's it's um it's a multi-hit skill, but you're not guaranteed to land many hits. Now the bigger the target is, the more likely you can summon, the more likely you can land more hits. 
but with smaller targets it's definitely um a bit of a dps de a dps loss but it's still a pretty good skill for the damage it does just don't expect to land all four attacks on a small target because it's also a multi-hit ability on this i run judgment so that i can proc the conviction judgment combo from these two skills these are two two lower damage multi-hit skills which make them ideal for judgment conviction because our other multi-hit skills deal a fair bit more damage than these so you want to use these just to proc the effect so you can then use your higher damage abilities down here um next skill i have on the list is energy release energy release is the soul fist um damage buff and um damage and damage reduction buff now on this i take quick prep for the cooldown reduction tenacity or shorter purification based on what the and based on what the fight requires so i'll use purification on gate one volton and tenacity on gate two volton so you can freely change these out based on the fight you're currently in and of course we take ready attack ready attack gives us a massive damage increase for six seconds um and this is just enough time to unload all our damage abilities before this buff wears off so we'll get into how this plays out later when we go into rotations but just know that you're going to want to use this before you use any of your major damage abilities so you want to carefully choose between either the flash step damage increase or their energy release damage increase based on what's coming off of cooldown. It's important to know that the damage from victory shout and the damage from ready attack do not stack. If they're both active, only ready attack will be in effect because it's the greater attack power increase. You can't have both of these self buffs active at the same. You can't get the effect of both of these self buffs at the same time. So if this is an energy release is off cooldown, you then use flash step and use your lower damage abilities. Now based on the let me just take off the cooldowns. Based on the amount of cooldown reduction that you have, energy release shouldn't well we'd be we'd be in hype two in most cases. So let's do this again. So Based on your cooldown reductions, energy release would be up for 6 seconds. And then by the time it runs out, there's about 6 seconds left on cooldown. You could then flash step 3 times to get 3 seconds of damage increase. So you can use a couple skills with the victory shot buff while energy release comes off cooldown. And then you can activate it and go into your higher damage abilities. So that's just something to note. Use this or this depending on what is on cooldown and what's coming off cooldown. So the next skill that we're going to is Merciless Pummel. We take Hard Hitter, Cold Hearted, and the Double Up to get the most damage out of the skill. Now this is also a multi-hit ability, so it's possible that the boss will move out of the way but it recently got a quality of life buff to increase the range of the skill so i think i should be able to hit the boss from here let me see yeah there's also a little there's also like a slight step forward but you shouldn't rely on that to get in position while you are you are fixed in position you can rotate the skill a little bit by moving your, your mouse so if the boss is like walking or moving slightly you can you know just redirect your damage to keep the boss in range um, this is our highest damage ability and you should really only try to use it 
after you've used energy release to give it as much extra damage as possible. Next, we have Energy Blast. On Energy Blast, it, I take Tenacity, Weak Point Detection, and Focus Strike. Um, tenacity will for push immunity, Weak Point Detection um, for extra damage to bosses, and Ferocious Strike just to get the skill out faster and do more damage. This skill was buffed recently in the latest patch and so it's a pretty good damage ability. It's a pretty good damage option now. The reason you don't take range hit is because the skill already has pretty long range without it and efficient striker doesn't affect us because energy cost isn't a concern of ours. So even without range hit, I think I can still hit the boss from here. Yeah. So range hit is just it's a bit unnecessary because this is more than enough range for most situations. With this, you can attack Volton from behind the pillar while he's in the middle of the map. So this is a pretty good skill. And with the tenacity, you can have pulled push immunity for a whole second during the cast of the skill. Okay, so the next skill we have is Bolting Crash. Now, Bolting Crash is our party synergy skill as well as our counter ability. Um, so for that, I take Volant and Fighting Spirit Enhancement. So Volant gives me a bit of a, a more movement during the ability during the cast, allowing me to close the gap to counter the boss. It also makes it another movement skill I can use to get in position in the event that Flash Dev is on cooldown. Fighting Spirit Enhancement gives the party. 6% damage increase for 10 seconds and with my swiftness this skill has a I believe yeah, a 10 second cooldown reduction so in height that should go down to about 8 seconds I believe so I can have the skill up fairly often so the skill can have pretty decent uptime for party synergy but the drawback to this is, it is your counter ability, so you're going to only want to use it off cooldown if you know that the boss was countered recently, or if you know that there are no counter mechanics coming up soon. So bear that in mind. The next ability I have is Shadow Breaker. And Shadow Breaker, um, Shadow Breaker, I take Predator for the extra damage for lower tar for lower HP foes, it's, it's 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 the sensible it's the most sensible thing to take in the first row. Um, it 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 essentially works out to be a 19% damage increase, but um, it's the best option in the first row. Then take weak point detection for the second row and sixth sense for the third row. Now. These are the skills I use for Soul Fist. There are more skills we can use, and I'll go through those um, in another section to show you various alternatives. But I like Flash Tip because it gives decent stagger and a weak point, and um, it comes out pretty quickly with a fairly low cooldown. So it's a pretty good skill for me, the way I like to play. I don't like being pinned down, so I don't use um I, there are certain skills i try to avoid using the reason i'm okay with energy blast is because it comes with tenacity so i know that while i'm casting it i'm immune to um knockbacks and pushes and things like that um so those are the skills that i use and i will now go over some alternative skills you can use now an alternative movement ability you can use is pulverizing palm um, it also is a good movement ability with a pretty low cooldown and it also has an attack buff um, when used. The difference between this and flash dip is that the attack buff for this only activates if you land the hit. Meaning, if you dash to get in range but don't hit the boss, 
then you don't get the damage increase. But however, once you hit the boss, then you get a fairly decent damage increase. Now, this does this will give you a smaller damage increase than a flash step fully charged. The benefit to this is that this is instant damage increase. Whereas with flash step, you have to dash multiple times to get the maximum effect. This effect is um, equal to, to or better than two dashes of flash step. So flash step is only better with the third dash. So you need to use it all three times to get more damage than using this once. But the benefit of flash death is that you don't need to hit the boss to get the damage increase. So you can dash to get in range and arrive at the boss with the three stacks of your damage increase. So because I'm using adrenaline, I wouldn't use pulverizing palm because it would just make it too hard to stack adrenaline. Uh, as I said before, flash death gives me three stacks of the six I need to maintain adrenaline really easy. So I wouldn't use this. It's a it's an option if you want to use it, but I wouldn't use it. So another skill that we can use is Tempest Blast. Tempest Blast is a pre for this you take charge enhancement for the bit of extra cooldown reduction. You would take Eradication to turn it into a charge ability and then you would take Demolition for the 100% damage increase to um, bosses. So this basically is Special Beam Cannon from Dragon Ball Z. Now the reason I don't use this skill is because again I don't like being pinned down and this does not have any push immunity. So this can be easily interrupted. But I don't need to wait for the full charge. It does do significantly more damage when fully charged. So you're encouraged to fully charge it, which leaves you vulnerable and stationary for a fair amount of time. Now, although you can't turn much, you can aim it a little bit. You have like a 45 degree window during the charge time where you can you know just aim it so if the boss is slightly moving you can just like point it somewhere else before it comes out um it's a fairly it's a, it's a better damage skill than shadow breaker and it also has level two weak point but it doesn't have any stagger so i prefer shadow breaker because it comes with weak point and it comes with stagger and it comes out faster so comparing this to this out to the shadow breaker every time though tempest blast i agree does do more damage now the next alternative skill you can use is crippling barrier so for crippling barrier we would take um quick prep for the cooldown reduction and if we look at the second row you may think that weak point detection is the better skill to take but it's actually a hard hitter and I'm going to show you why and it's all because of these the third tripods now these both do the exact same thing and the exact amount of damage but just that one pushes targets when it's when it ends and one pulls them in because you can't push or pull bosses either one of these is fine it's just a, just a directional change but the damage they do are the same now the reason you take hard hitter over weak point detection here is because the second part of this tripod deals more damage based on your level of hard hitter so with hard hitter level one it will currently do 56 percent more damage when the skill ends now compare that to the 50 percent of weak point detection you can see that just at level one hard hitter is giving this you get more damage from having hard hitter here than putting 
than getting weapon detection. Not to mention the fact that Hard Hitter itself already gives you 10% increased damage. So the 10% from Hard Hitter plus the 56% from the second half of the tripod gives you a 66% damage increase versus the 50% from weak point detection. Now, why these two tripods are really good is because this, um, if you look at the level two effect, the damage goes up for both the first and second half of the tripod. So you can level up the damage of this tripod from two sources hard hitter and itself so if so if i were to max hard hitter you will see that this would do 62 percent more damage at level one but if i bring this if i bring keen judgment to level two you will see that it will go to 74 percent more damage so whether i level a hard hitter or a keen judgment these two tripods synergize to give crippling barrier a fair bit of damage now for crippling barrier wait let me save this you have two options one if you're in a burst window you could just tap it to get the to trigger the final tripod but if you're waiting for skills to come off cooldown you could always just hold it and that will allow you time to get your skills to get on to get some skills off so you can um, continue your rotation. So these are some alternative skills you can use. Um, they're all viable. It all just depends on your preferred playstyle. None of them are bad. It's just what you, it's, just about, it's all about how you want to play the class. So um, let's go over some of the rotations I use for my skill set. Let me go over my rotations so the rotations are pretty straightforward um, you just want to try to get all your skills off while you have either the flash step well you can't get all your skills off with the flash step because it, the buff is only three seconds but you can get all your skills off during energy release because the buff lasts six seconds so your rotation depends firstly on whether or not you have adrenaline so i'll show you the rotation i use to build adrenaline as quickly as possible and it starts with you using flash dip three times to get three stacks i then use bolting crash to trigger the six percent um, party damage i then use energy release to trigger the um the six seconds of my own damage which which will now overwrite the damage from flash dev and then i start with focus orb and heavenly squash because at the time of activating force orb i would have triggered the Activating Force Orb will trigger the sixth stack of Adrenaline, giving me my 15% cooldown, my 15% crit chance. And because this is a projectile, it will activate the crit chance before this hits the boss. Hopefully. It depends on your positioning, but the Adrenaline activates immediately. So if it activates before the projectiles reach the boss, then force orb will hit the boss with 15% increased crit chance and then i go into heavenly squash and my other skills at which point um force orb should still be on cooldown now in with energy overflow you're, you're always going to want to maintain fighting in hype level two only going to three when you want to use your awakening to get additional damage and the cooldown reduction. Now, so the fight would, when approaching the boss, I'll be at level two. I would dash, 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 this, this, this. So you see, I have adrenaline and I have energy release active. 
And so this is the combo to get adrenaline. Now I'll just do it again. It's one, two, three. That, these will, so those force orb hits went off and triggered adrenaline. So they got the 15% damage increase. So the full rotation would look like this. Firstly, at level two. So you can see by the time it ended, the damage buff from energy release just ran out. So I got to use all five of my abilities during the energy release window. Now, if I do this again, you're going to see that based on my setup, flash step would be just about off cooldown with my current with my current swiftness. So I'll just do it again and you can watch flash step and my other damage skills as I'm going through. Now this is why we put um, quick recharge on flash step so that after our rotation we could try to use flash step to get some more um, skills off cooldown to keep the damage up. So if I try it again you'll see it looks like this. So quick recharge didn't work on any skills in that one. But as you can see, by the time I ended, my heavenly squash was just about off cooldown again. And by the way, I don't have level seven cooldown gems on my skills as yet. I moved all my gems to my Lance Master. So this is just with level five and level six um, cooldown gems. So with more cooldown reduction, you can see how the skills would be available more quickly allowing you to continue your damage without any downtime so that's just something to take to take note of the next thing to know about that rotation is you always use you always use force orb and then heavenly squash in order to you have a chance of proccing conviction judgment or even more cooldown reduction. So as you can see, I'm trying to maximize on the cooldown reduction sources as much as possible in order to just keep my skills going because I don't need to worry about being unable to cast skills. With energy overflow, once you have the skill available, you can just use it. If I try that again, of like a judgment conviction, let's see. bit off but you can see with the even more cooldown reduction you can easily just start pianoing your keys and keeping your DPS up. Now let's go over party synergies. So let's just look at my crit chance. If you go here you see that my base crit chance is um, 35% that's coming from the 15% I have on my necklace and the 20% I have from Precise Dagger. Now, during a fight, let me just turn off cooldowns. During a fight, you'll see that my crit rate jumps up to about 65%. Now, 65% is a pretty decent um, crit rate however this crit rate that I have is coming from the Argos set piece the Argos set bonus um, as well as my adrenaline so when I get into my relic set I will not have that 15% crit chance from Argos which means that my crit rate 
with the same accessories with we're not talking relics right now but with my same accessories my crit rate would be 50 percent which is too low to take advantage of something like keen blunt which is why it's not going to be on my engravings right now but if we look at party synergies because soul fist brings so much raw damage from both its um identity skill and its various um um damage attack power increases it means that it will benefit a lot from having a crit synergy present in the party so if you have a if you have a choice in the matter you're going to want to be in a party with a gunslinger or a dead eye or um you have lance master striker war dancer all those classes that give you crit chance you're going to you're going to want them to be your best friends because they're going to allow you to hit those crits more often because without them you just don't have enough crit chance it is possible to um, get a bit more crit but i'll be working on that after i get my relic set to just try some stuff out so try to be in a party with a crit synergy especially if you cannot maintain more than 50 percent crit chance on your own so let's talk about burst windows on soul fist now we have hype level three which gives us a 65 percent damage increase for 20 seconds which is a pretty good amount of damage in the burst window the downside to this is that because we're a swiftness based class we get the full 50 second lockout after hype ends which means that you only want to go into hype 3 if you are certain that a burst window is coming up let's say that you're doing a mechanic and you know the boss is going to be staggered or vulnerable after the mechanic or you said the boss is stagger meter um you said the boss is stagger meter about to deplete you know that you know you're going to have a few seconds to unload on the boss what you're going to want to do you'd naturally already be in hype 2 let me take off the cooldowns you're going to want to be in hype 2 and you're going to want to have adrenaline and what you're going to do let me just keep this up what you're going to want to do is as you see the boss about to get vulnerable hype 3 energy release awakening unload all your abilities and to release again if you do this properly you should be able to get one more energy release right before um, your hype runs out you because you want to take advantage of the cooldown reduction of hype 3 you want to start with your awakening to get the maximum um, effect of it out of the way and get the massive cooldown reduction and then you're going to want to watch your hype buff to see that it's almost running out and before it runs out you're going to want to activate energy release so that you can just get a bit more so you can activate it with the lower cooldown reduction just to get a better uptime since you're going to be locked out of hype for 50 seconds after that burst window now luckily because of another change that was made in the in the patch if you enter hype let's just say you enter hype and then the boss starts a mechanic you can just end it by pressing the x key this will allow it won't affect the cooldown you still have the full 50 second cooldown but at least if you're in a mechanic where you can't attack the boss you're not wasting hype it's on cooldown so you can get it back up uh sooner when the boss comes out of the mechanic so it's just a little quality of life sadly it doesn't affect the 
duration of the lockout, but at least you can make the lockout um, start running down faster with this little change. Mm. So everything that I have just covered in this video is pre-relic set. Um, I'm going to be getting my four piece relic set real soon. And with that, I will run this again and I'll just, um, so when I get my four piece relic set, I will be making another video about how the relic set changes these things. Just to, just to give you a nice before and after. Um, I am not going to change my accessories right now. I'm currently buying some legendary books. And so I want to complete those purchases before I start getting accessories. But um, with the relic set video, I'll also include the future plans for the build and the end goal I'm going for. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, any critiques, feel free to comment in the comment section down below. If you have any questions you want, to answer, want me to answer live, you can come by the stream, say hi, ask your questions. Um, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, so I hope you guys learned something. I hope it shed some light on any confusion anybody was having as it relates to playing energy overflow. It's a, it's a pretty fun build given that you don't have any downtime. It's like a bit of an adjustment period. If you're coming from a class that shows um, massive numbers and you know these millions per hit because we don't have many single hit abilities you're not going to be seeing those massive numbers like other classes but you will see them more often so that's where it kind of balances out if you can just get used to that aspect of the type of damage the class does then you'll be just fine so um as always i would like to thank you guys for watching I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please leave a like, come by the stream sometime, say hi. My name is Exo, and I really hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.